William Nylander steals the show in Sweden as Patrick Kane is looking for a new home. Hey everyone, welcome into another edition of Off the Post. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Sports columnist Steve Simmons and Post Media Hockey columnist Bruce Garriock. And guys, what a weekend it was for Maple Leaf star William Nylander who went home to his native Stockholm and had five points and two wins, including the OT winner on Sunday against Minnesota. Steve, he's got 27 points on the season, which is one shy of the league leaders from Vancouver. You've seen his entire career in in Toronto is this just some insane hot streak he's on or is William Nylander possibly a legitimate Hart Trophy candidate right now well no one is a legitimate Hart Trophy candidate in November but as of for the November Hart Trophy candidates he's in the mix <laughs> uh, you know, uh, he's there with the Hughes brothers you know Jack Hughes is two points a game for the New Jersey Devils um, I think Quinn Hughes has been the best player in the NHL this season so there's those guys. Sidney Crosby's having a terrific year uh, so far with the Penguins, and Kucherov is having a great year in Tampa. So there, there's sort of a growing list of guys you might consider. But the way William Nylander has played, he's never played anywhere close to this before. So this is a whole new level for him. It's a whole new belief for the, for the coaching staff. You know, he's going from playing 16 or so minutes in playoff games to 23 minutes now. So it shows you what they're believing in him at this point in time more than they've ever believed in him below before. Well, and it's been interesting to kind of watch his rise and and the way he's played this season. I think the the Leafs are probably looking at it right now like, geez, maybe we should have locked this guy up, um, or at least tried to get him to agree to the term that that Austin Matthews has got because he's 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 such a big part of that team. And we saw that this weekend in, in Sweden, guys. I mean, he just took his game to another level. That was a stage where he easily could have have kind of folded isn't the right word, but maybe not performed up to Hosted. the ex- Yeah. You know, but maybe not performed up to the expectations that everybody thought they were going to see when he's playing on his home soil. And he just he he had a flair for the dramatic. One thing, the one thing, you know, when when I watch this guy, he, he kind of takes me out of my seat at some point. Like that that goal, the the winning goal yesterday. I mean, that was just like to me. He's he shows so much skill and and so and, and he's not afraid to drive to the net, and that's what I like about him. And that's now today, Bruce. That may have not been last year. That may have not been five years ago. That may have not yeah. been when he was drafted. You know, I mean, I remember Dave Poulin talking about his skills when they drafted him because he was part of Leafs management at the time. And he said, this guy can stick handle on a phone book. And he said, that's what we loved about him at the time. And and But he has been sort of a guy who was there a little bit and then not there and there a little bit and not there. And this is, this is far and away the best hockey he's ever played. And yeah, as of here we are on the 20th of November or whatever day this happens to be, and he is a Hart Trophy candidate, and he's one of the guys, Bruce, in the league that you can't take your eyes off. Well, and I, I didn't answer your question, Rob. I think he's certainly put himself in the conversation. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's been an incredible first uh, 17 games for William Nylander. Meanwhile, Bruce, these Global Series games are an interesting wrinkle that the league has thrown into their regular season schedule. Do you think these are going to continue, or are there some potential obstacles in the way? Well, I think they'll continue because I think the, the league has been pleased with them. Um, you know, the, the games did not sell out over in Stockholm, but, you know, I'm sure the ticket prices were a bit of a hurdle there. Um, I like the idea of the Global Series. Um, I think that teams shouldn't do it every year. I think they need to to make sure that they switch around the teams. I thought it was interesting that the Leafs went overseas because that's not something – they usually do. Now I noticed Leafs didn't have any home games because um, the league only wants to pay so much for those teams to go over. One of the things I would have liked to have seen, though, is, um, you know, TSN did three of those games. I would have liked to have seen Sportsnet or someone negotiate with Sportsnet to lift the blackouts um, so that, you know, it's one thing to if you're going to if you're going to grow the game internationally, don't forget about where your bread and butter is, and that's in Canada. And I, I know a lot of people across Canada would have liked to have seen those games. And even the last game, uh, you know, uh, Steve was not a national. Uh, the last game in the Leaf game was not a national game either. It was, it was done by Sportsnet. Well, 
there are things the NHL does that it drives me crazy. One of them is they play games the night the Hockey Hall of Fame inducts its people. I, I it's, hate that as well. If you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna have a Hall of Fame night, you know, don't do it when there's games going on. If, if you're going to have a European series, have them so everybody can watch the games. You don't black them out. You don't put them on net, one network when the other network can't show them. Um, and what you don't do is if you're the rights holder for the National Hockey League, you're the guy paying all that money to have these rights, is you don't keep your broadcasters in studio in Toronto while the game is being played in Stockholm. Like, that's that's just – that's mind-boggling to me. Like, sp- spend that extra seven cents and send your people – you know, along the trip, make it work, make these national games, make them matter. You know, it, if you're going to do this internationally, how about nationally at the same time? Finally, Steve Patrick Kane is looking for a new team. It's been reported as many as eight teams are on his radar, including the Sabres, the Panthers, Stars, Red Wings, and possibly even the Maple Leafs. Do any of these teams, do you think, make sense? Or is there another one in your mind that's a fit for the future Hall of Fame? Well, you're talking about Patrick Kane, so probably every team makes sense. You know, this this you know this is one of the, this is a generational hockey player we're talking about here, and he's at the end of the line. And he's 35, but he can help everybody. Um, the question is, who needs it the most? And he, and you look at what the Washington Capitals have done this season. They played pretty good hockey for a, a team nobody expected to play pretty good hockey. Yeah, okay. And and Carberry's done a hell of a job in his first year coaching that team. They're second last in the NHL in goals. You don't think they could use, and they lost Backstrom, you know, for for the year. So you don't think they could use Patrick Kane's offense? You don't think the the Buffalo Sabres, who are below three goals a game, could use Patrick Kane's offense? You can go through team by team by team. He fits just about everywhere. But I kind of like the Washington fit because, boy, do they need offense. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I kind of came on here today thinking that it, the Detroit Red Wings were a good fit for him. But I really think I, I'd like to see him go home. I'd like to see him go to Buffalo, shot, you know, sign a one-term, one-year deal and see how that goes. I, I think it would be intriguing. I think it would be fascinating. And um, I, 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 when I look at fits, I think the Buffalo Sabres are fit because they need the kind of guy – who has the offensive, and I'm going to say potential that Patrick Kane has because, you know, he hasn't played in a while, but but clearly this guy's a proven goal scorer and a proven player. The only other, the only other fit, the only reason I saw Detroit as a fit, guys, is that because Alex Brinkat is there and there's there's obvious um, chemistry between Patrick Kane and Alex Brinkat. You know, to me, coaches use a, a term. Can a player drive a line? Usually it's the center who drives lines. And every once in a while you get a winger who drives a line, like the way Nylander is driving a line in Toronto, like the way, you know, you've seen other guys do it over the years, certainly. Patrick Kane can drive a line still at 35. And so whoever he walks into, whether it be a first line or a second line circumstance, he's going to bring that team's offense up and make that team's special teams, especially power play, better. And, and I think that's the interesting thing. Where does he go and how does he fit? Because he didn't look great to me with the New York Rangers last year. No, he definitely did not. We'll see how much he has left in the tank coming off this uh, uh, surgery this offseason. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. For Steve Simmons and Bruce Carriock, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time on another edition of Off the Post.